Hi, hello students. Okay, so this is just Mr. Wee. I'm going to be going over, um, let's see if I can focus on that. Uh, I'll probably be going over number six, actually. Uh, I was considering doing number three, but I'm going to go over number six with you guys, like a, a more typical problem. It might be a little bit confusing, okay? All right, so first things first is I'm going to start with the box. Not a big deal, okay? It's, I know it's a little bit messy, but it's kind of hard to do this all at the same time. Um, what you want to start with is your given. So what I mean by given is what value is actually given. See how it's asked me for how many formula units? That's not given to me. i got to figure that out. But what is given to me is this, 234 grams of CaF2. Okay, so that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put 234 grams CA. I want to specify grams of what, okay? I'm dealing with CAF2, okay? And the bottom here, there's nothing, right? Not right now. We're not going to use that, okay? So I'm going to leave space for if I'm going to build more boxes. So I'm going to leave a, kind of a blank space here. I always do that. I'm going to put equals. And what, I, what do I want at the end? What type of units do I want? So look at the question what it's asked for. How many formula units? Do I want how many formula units are contained in such and such? Okay, that's what I want. So what I want is I want my answer. I'm going to leave a blank space here, okay, to fill in later. I'm going to put the units that they want, formula units. Okay, in case you don't know, that's a type of particle, like kind of like an atom. Sorry, Mr. Wee's having a little bit of a hard time trying to write this down, but it's a type of particle. So atoms are a type of particle. Ions are a type of particle. Molecules are a type of particle. Formula units are a type of particle, okay? Okay, so the next step is to get from grams to formula units. There's not really a way to do that. So let's look at the chart that you guys recognize from being in class, or it's in your notes as well. Okay, let's try to focus in on that. Now, right now, we're at grams, okay? We're at a mass, okay? But you got to ask yourself, where are we trying to go? Okay, in this case, are we going to moles? Or are we going to a type of particle? So, so let's go up here. So when we're going for mass. I'm going to. Am I going to moles? No, I'm not. Okay, because look, formula unit, like I said, is a type of particle. So look here. I'm going for mass to moles to particles. Follow the arrows here and follow the steps. Okay, so for me to go to mass to moles to particles, okay, or for me to go from mass to particles, I need to go sequentially, step by step. So if I go from mass to moles, I don't follow this arrow, I follow this arrow, okay? It's the only arrow that let me go, okay? And look what it tells me to do. It tells me to divide by grams over moles. It div it's basically telling me to divide by the molar mass, okay? of whoever you're dealing with. In this case, I'm dealing with this guy, CaF2, okay? So to calculate the molar mass, okay, again, grams over moles. To calculate that, okay, I'm going to look at my PT. So in this case, CaF2, let's break it down to each individual component. Look at your periodic table, okay? Let's look at Calcium. So let's go to my periodic table. I'm literally in the class right now. Okay. So let's look at calcium. Calcium is right over here. Okay. Calcium has a molar mass of 40, and that's going to be grams over moles. Okay. I'm going to round that down to 40. Right. So we're going to have calcium is going to be 40, and then I'm going to put grams over moles. Okay. Those are the units from the periodic table. It's not just 40, it's 40 grams over moles. What about my F, however? So if you look at your F, okay, first of all, please consider that there's two Fs, okay? So let's look at F. Let's go to the periodic table one more time. Let's go to F. It's right there. It's exactly 19, and that's grams over moles. So I'm going to write 19. And then the units, again, are grams over moles. But hold on. Like I said, there's two. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. And if you do the calculation, it's going to be 38 grams per mole. All right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 40 to 38. 
So I'm not just looking for the molar mass of calcium or fluorine. I'm looking for the molar mass of calcium F2, okay, or CaF2. I'm going to add these two numbers together. This, this, I should get a total of 78 grams over a mole, okay. That's the molar mass of CaF2. So I'm going to box these guys. CaF2 weighs 78 grams per mole. Okay. So now what do I do with that? I have grams over moles. Let's go back to the chart. It says to divide by grams over moles. So what that means is in this box, I'm going to use this value and I'm going to plug it in here. But look how I'm going to do it. It says to divide by 78 grams over moles. What that means is I'm going to put this guy, the numerator, 78 grams. Whoop, he's going to go on the bottom. Get it? Because we're dividing 78 grams. The, the mole, the guy that was on the bottom, it's not going to kind of be flipped. It's going to be at the top. And again, we're, we're talking about the weight of this guy. So it's going to be CAF2. Please specify who you're talking about. I'm talking about CAF2. Okay. Now look here. You have to ask yourself, are we finished? Are my units in grams? or formula units. No, watch. Okay, so first of all, let's cancel out the units that we can. So if you notice that there's grams of CAF2 on the bottom here and grams CAF2 on the top, they will cancel out. Okay, numerator divides into denominator, they'll cancel out if they're the same. Okay, I'm still left with moles of CAF2, so we're not quite there yet. I want to get the formula units. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the chart here. Right now I went from mass to moles. I want to get to moles to particles. Okay. So I want to end up here. I'm still here. I'm not moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by this number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm going to multiply that now. So what that means is I'm going to do this. I'm going to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then there's an actual value to that. So in this case, the type of particle we're looking at is formula units. So I'm going to put formula units. I'm going to abbreviate. Okay. And here's what I know. I know that for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, that's basically saying that there's one mole. Okay. So for every one mole, it's kind of like a dozen. A dozen is equal to 12 roses. Instead, it's going to be one mole is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, in this case, formula units, okay? And guess what? My answer is going to be in formula units because, look, the moles, and again, I'm still talking about CaF2. So let's write that. This is still CaF2. Since I have moles of CaF2 over here, so moles of CaF2 over here, they're going to cancel out. Look at the units I have left. Formula units of CaF2. Formula units, oh, I didn't specify, CaF2. Right? I'll be stuck with that, so that's good. Okay. All right, so that's it. I set everything up, now let's do the math. This is going to be the easier part, okay? So let's see, 78, okay, and 234. Let's see how many times I can divide 78 into 234, okay? Just on the top of my head, I know that 78 can go into 234 three times. So I'm going to simplify this guy to 3. If I, if I divide 78 into this guy to get to 3, I'm going to divide 78 into this guy below to get just 1. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take all the numbers at the top and multiply them together, and then you're going to divide it by all the numbers on the bottom. Okay, so what that's going to look like is I'm going to take 3 times 1, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, that sounds confusing, but in this case here, let's make this simple. That 0 0.02, let's erase that. Okay, let's just keep that as 6. Okay, so just imagine this. It's going to be 3 times 1 times 6. Okay, so that would be 18. 3 times 6 is 18 times 1 is 18. Okay. And then keep that at the end. So I'm not going to mess with that guy. I'm just going to plug him in at the end. 23rd. 
6 times 1 times 3, that's 18, and we're going to divide by all the numbers on the bottom, 1, 1, so it's going to be 18. Almost finished, okay? So now I have 18 times 10 to the 23rd, and then remember the rule is any number that's in front of the decimal has to be less than 10. So I'm going to move this decimal over. A lot of stuff that we got to memorize, okay? Okay, so it's going to be 1.8, but since we moved over that decimal, I have to compensate. I can't just leave it as 10 to 23 anymore. I have to change the number one order of magnitude higher than it used to be to keep it the same, okay? To keep it the same value. So it's not just 18 times 10 to the 23rd anymore. It's the same thing if you say 1.8 times 10 to the 24th. They're the same value. It's just because we moved the decimal over, we have to kind of take that consideration to the exponent here. Okay? That's my final answer. Okay? So please rewind this over and over again. Okay? Repeat any of the steps that you guys didn't understand. Hopefully this will help out. Okay? You guys have a good one. Bye.